Hey, what's up, everybody? A few years ago, Unity released the new input system, input system 1.0, which is now up to like 1.4. And for the longest time, I completely ignored it or loosely looked at it and just didn't use it. But now I've made the switch to using it as my default, and I want to show you exactly why. It's extremely simple to get started with. They kind of fixed all of the problems that I had, and it really doesn't take much work to get going with and adds a lot of flexibility and power. So if you haven't made the switch to the new input system yet, or you didn't even know it existed, make sure that you hang on for this one because it's going to be really useful and probably change the way you do things quite a bit. Also, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. It helps a lot. And if you have comments about this video or about the input system, drop them down below. I'm curious to see what everybody else is thinking about it, if you're using it, how long you've been using it for, and if you're running into any special edge cases or issues or things that everybody else should know about. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by the Unity Asset Store. As you probably already know, the Asset Store is doing a huge Black Friday sale at the moment with over 500 assets at 50% off and hundreds of daily flash deals at 70% off. This is the time of year where I always stack up on assets since you don't really get better deals than this. Personally, I'm gonna grab the Monsters Ultimate Pack that's on flash deal today, but I'm also really excited for the Fantasy Horde bundle that's gonna be on tomorrow's flash deal. I recently did a full video on all of my favorite assets that are included in the sale, so go check that out and save a ton on all these amazing assets. You can use the code JasonWymanBF22 to get an additional 10% off any order over $100. There are hundreds of assets on sale right now and new flash deals every day and some really exciting ones coming up this week I definitely recommend you check out. You can do that by clicking the link in the description. To demonstrate the new input system, I've set up a sample scene with a little character that runs around using the Kenny NL assets, which I'll link down below. They're great, amazing assets that he makes available for free on Open Game Art and on his own page. So here you can see I've got a character that runs around, goes left and right, and can jump. I can actually also go up a little bit and kind of float upwards if I hold the up button, and I can force myself to go down because that's the way that I've got it set up. So let's take a look at how we would write this in the old input system, how we'll do it in the new input system and see just how simple it is to make that switch and see some of the extra cool stuff that you get from it. Now to accomplish this in the old input system, my script would look something like this. It's relatively simple with a speed and a jump force variable that I can adjust. We cache the rigid body in our awake method, and then we've got a movement variable that we fill in the update method. So in update, I create a new vector three by reading input.getAxis horizontal and vertical. These are the old built-in ones of the default or old input system. Then we check on line 15 to see if we press the fire one button, which would be our jump left click or space bar and then if so we add some force to do a jump and in the late update we actually do our movement so that's why we cache the movement and update and then do the actual movement in the late update because we want actually i should be doing this in fixed update had it in the wrong update the entire time so we want to be doing this in fixed update not in late update so that it's actually timed with our physics system nice catch there so this is how we would do it normally or in the old system let's see what the difference is in the new system here you can see it's a little bit different, but not much. You keep the same speed and jump force, the vector two for movement in the rigid body, and we cache that in awake. Everything so far, exactly the same, but we don't have an update method. We do have the fixed update method, which will add force in our movement direction, but then we have down below an on move, and an on fire method. These are all written as expression body methods, by the way. If you're not familiar with the syntax, you can just hit Alt Enter in Writer and switch it back and forth. It's just a way to do one liner statements in C sharp to make it a little bit smaller. So if you're not familiar with that syntax, exactly the same just for one liners. I'm gonna switch it back to expression bodies to shorten it up. So what does the on move method do? Well, it gets an input value passed into it and then sets the movement value to whatever our movement is. And on fire does the jump or adds the force to go upwards. So how does this all work? Well, what's actually happening is this on move method, which looks like it's never used, and writer doesn't know it's used yet, is being used by a built-in new component or part of the input system. It's going to call this method whenever our movement inputs change and only when they change so that we can update our game or our character to 
respond to those new movements. So if we don't change anything, we just hold to the right, we're going to get one vector and it'll never call it again. And then as soon as we release it, we would get the new vector zero, zero, and it would kind of reset. And then if we went to the left, we'd get a negative one on our X and, and so on. And then on fire, again, we'll get called whenever we press the fire button. So how does that all work? How do you hook up this magic and get these two magic methods? Well, let's take a look. It's actually very, very simple. So here I've got the scene set up with just the characters, rigid body and capsule collider and colliders on the objects. If I hit play right now, it'll just fall down and do absolutely nothing. No inputs hooked up. Let's make sure that's true. It looks good. And then let's go on to adding our input setup. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is add a player input component. So set type in player input, and I'm going to do this directly on the player that I'm adding. So I'll add a player input component and you'll see here that it's got an actions field that has no input actions assigned. And then it's got some options for UI cameras, which is a little bit more advanced and allows you to do UIs and elements for multiple players so they can join the game, hop in and split screen that UI and everything. We'll talk about that in another video. If it sounds interesting, please hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment and let me know that you're curious about the player input manager system that does all of that for you. And I will make a full video about it. So you've got the player input here and it's got no actions. And if you just go search for actions, you probably won't find anything depending on your version of Unity that you pulled in and what else is in there. But what you can do and what I love is you just hit the create actions button and it will create a new set of input actions. I'm going to call this Jason's new input system actions because I've already created some and it will automatically assign the default things that you need movement looking around and firing or shooting and then it's also got stuff for the UI for moving up and down left right through the UI all of the normal stuff that you would do but we're going to talk about the player specific stuff here so you see it's got move look and fire right there I'm going to close out this window because I don't necessarily need it right now I'm not going to make any changes to it but if I want to go open it and modify it and make some new changes add some new new actions. I can just double click on the system actions here, right here, double click it to pop this window back up. So now that I've got my actions in there and I've got my move and fire, I just need to go over here and take a look at my player input. I've got a couple different options for behavior. By default, it's on send messages, which is what we were using so that we'll get those callbacks. We'll see in a second. But I also wanted to mention that you can also use broadcast to send it out to everything. You can use the Unity events, which I haven't used personally yet, although I plan to dive into sometimes and they're pretty simple though you hit invoke unity events you expand it out and then you just assign the events that you want to assign so these ones would be under player and find a move and then i would go assign the move method to that although it is important to note that the syntax on this or the um the signature for those methods is slightly different from the send message methods. So let's go back to the send message methods. I've got it sending messages and you can see down here in this little description note area, it tells you all of the messages that are going to be sent on move, on look, and on fire. On move and on fire are the ones that I care about. Now I'll add my player, which is that other script that I showed you just a moment ago with the speed, jump, force, and everything. Let's go take a look at it. And because it's got on move and on fire on that same game object, it should just receive those messages. So we press play. And any second now, we'll be able to move around. I can go left, I can go right, I can jump just by clicking. Left click jumps, and is it left control? I'm not sure what the, okay, I'm not sure what the jump keyboard button is by default, but I'll have to figure that out. If anybody knows, drop a comment down below. If there isn't one, then that should probably get added. But you see, I can jump and move around and everything just kind of works. So that's really all there is to it for the very basics. Once I want to go add in some more stuff to it, so if I want to add in another button, a right click or something else, I just need to go into my input actions, go create the new action, or maybe take this action right here and duplicate my fire action, make it something else, bind it up to a different button. Right now it's bound up to, let's see, fire. Left mouse, primary touch. Oh, yeah, it is not bound up to a keyboard button at all. That's interesting. That seems like that's uh, something that should be added as a default sometime soon. But you can see how easy it is to set this all up now. And it used to be very complicated. It used to be a whole bunch of steps. Now it's just kind of straightforward, and I like it. I'm going to stick with this going forward. So, again, if you got thoughts on this, uh, this input system, if you've been using it for a while, if you can think of something that's important that I didn't call out yet, or if there's something that you're kind of curious about and want to learn more about, drop a comment down below and let me know. I'm going to be diving into this more and probably talking about this and a couple other of Unity's new systems that have been coming out recently in a little bit more depth. So again, if that sounds like fun, uh, drop a comment, hit thumbs up button, all that stuff. And don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Also, don't forget to check out the Black Friday sale at the Unity Asset Store. They've got 500 assets at 50% off and hundreds more on these flash deals at 70% off. And don't forget, you can use the code Jason Wyman BF22 to save an additional 10% on all the orders over $100.